aspect of the barrier, which is known as the triploid block, and how it can be overcome by using what we call as unreduced gametes. We also studied how you can produce, how unreduced gametes can be produced, genetically controlled, and the four ways in which you can produce them, either by the omission of the first or the second meiotic divisions. Then we saw about parallel spindle and about our uh, restitution nucleus also. Uh, and also arresting metaphase two in our second meiotic division. So that is the way it could be produced. And since when we are selecting the parents, we can have both the parents producing unreduced gametes where both the parents are deployed and then manage to get a tetraploid. Or we could have just one of them producing a unreduced gamete. And in fact, we could get a polyploid plant through sexual reproduction. And therefore, we call that a sexual polyploidization. Then we study the ratio of the female contribution or the contribution of the female gametes and the male gametes towards the production of the endosperm. And we said that the ideal ratio would be female to male contribution as two is to one, <clears throat> so that there is absolutely no block. But under normal conditions, when you try to produce a normal triploid, there is a block, and therefore we call that as an endosperm block. And we also saw how it can be produced, or rather how you can overcome it once it has come up. So this is the way where we saw the ratios, and the ideal ratio, the ratio required rather is two is to one, or when you're using a tetraploid and a diploid, then obviously it would come as a four is to one in order the four is to two in order that an endosperm would develop. All the other combinations also we saw and then how it would fail with the other combination. Then we thought about this. I mean, we saw how the various, uh, you would have various uh, our contributions would occur and how you would have the segregation rather before the segregation, we thought of how you're going to have a single, the various genotypes at a single locus. And that was an intralocus interaction. Of course, you will also have interlocus interactions, what we would call as epistasis. Now, considering the significance of unreduced gametes. Now, we know that the tetralic stage, when, which we saw giving rise to this tetralic conditions where you have A1, A2, A3, A4 coming up, you would have, it would produce maximum heterozygosity and probably it would result in maximum heterosis and as a consequence of which you would get hybrid vigor. Then we thought of uh, the various, uh, like since heterosis would increase, we would obviously mean that these plants are likely to be more vigorous. <laughs> We also saw that it would produce tetraploids very easily. It would be easier to produce tetraploids this way rather than by employing colchicine or by having other means of inducing tetraploidy in which we are not going to get a 100% success. <clears throat> now, we saw how maximum heterozygosity would be produced. I won't tell you to draw this diagram. We have already drawn it earlier. So the same thing if this question is asked, of course, you would have to incorporate this diagram. So you would start with, let us say, a dihaploid and a wild species. Or instead of the wild species, you can also have a dihaploid clone there. It would produce a normal egg and a normal molded egg. It would be two eggs. And presuming that this was A1, and again presuming that the wild species has been inbreeding, and it is the eggs are A2, A2, then obviously it would be A2. Or I could have taken a dihaploid again, wild species, or another dihaploid species, maybe a dihaploid species D. I'm saying D over here, because here we are going to think about the, we won't call it a species, we can even call it as a variety here. So the wild one could have been a dihaploid wild one. Let's say dihaploid W or dihaploid D. Whatever it be, you would get a normal egg and a normal pollen produced, producing a hybrid, which is A1, A2. Now, this A1A2, we would expect that it would produce sterile gametes because the separation of the two or all the chromosomes is not going to be equal for the two poles, uh, to the two poles during anaphase. So then, if at all it produces an unreduced gamete with the genotype as A1A2. When this genotype comes up as A1A2, we keep it 
In the meantime, or simultaneously, we have also crossed two diheploids, B and C, with the genotype as A3, A3, and A4, A4. So they have again produced in the similar way as for this one, they've produced normal egg and normal feeble, sorry, normal egg and normal pollen grain. I should have written normal PG here. I will make that correction one second. <laughs> Sorry for the normal PG. Yeah. Control S. Yeah, so this would be a normal PG, and you would get a pollen drain, and you would get a hybrid, which is again deployed A3, A4. Both of them now produce unreduced gametes, so bilateral sexual polyploidization. And you will get a 4X hybrid with maximum heterozygosity, even A2, A3, A4. Now, whatever we've discussed so far, considering only the allele A as important, we what we have done is intralocus interaction. That is what we have studied in Mendelian time as the dominant and the recessive genes. But of course, epistatic interaction or non-allelic interaction would also take place. Studied several of these examples in are uh, FI syllabus. So similarly, various epistasis may also be present, and there also you would get heterozygosity and uh, variations in the epistatic responses. So the significance would be that when you're crossing the wild species, we have done this already. So here we saw four of them. Contribution of the wild one, which was A2, was only 25% in the case of the four the tetraploid hybrid. Even A2, A3, 4, A2 has contributed only. 25%. Then the tuber yield and the selection would be more efficient and also easier to work with. And you would definitely collect those potatoes which are having good tubers and propagate them clonally, that is through the potato tuber itself. And in the process, you would get an improvement of the quality. And before you do this isolation or before you do the selection also, you're obviously going to get a large amount of variation it's up to you which you want to select. So we have completed these four parts. Now we go on to the advantages of unreduced gametes. As we had said that it would produce a tetraploid uh, progeny without having the hassle of doubling the chromosome number and not being sure whether it would give us results or not. And again, we do not want triploid plants. We don't want the triploid plant to come occur. So therefore, even the three X progeny will be eliminated. A large number of heterozygosity will be occurring. We saw even A2, A3, A4, and therefore explore whatever be your intralocus interaction and the interlocus interactions, and then select according to your needs. The, we have developed, or rather, the planet has developed several high yielding potatoes. And also, it has been possible that these can be easily subjected to back crossing and therefore introgression or the incorporation of single character becomes possible over a period of time, having taking about seven, eight or maybe up to 10 back crosses. <coughs> so ultimately, an unreduced gamete is going to be helpful to us. Then there will be several achievements. Now, whatever work we do, in case of potato, one second. Okay. Now, whatever work we do and whatever research you do, when you want it to be established, I mean, accepted at the international level, your findings and your samples have to be where they have an international potato research center. And they will carry out this work. They will examine the progeny, what you want to release as a variety or as a species, so far as potato is concerned. And only then you will be allowed and accepted for release. So then no matter how much you do, it has to be accepted at Peru. And they will see the regions also where it can be grown according to your claim. There may be certain potatoes which would do well at highland regions or at higher altitudes. And then maybe, and also latitudes, and then maybe others which would do better in the plains or in the lowland regions, so to do better in tropical areas, and similarly those which would do better in temperate regions. So accordingly, these varieties will be released. 
and you may produce any number of varieties it's up to them and it is their work which will decide and their stringent uh, analysis which is going to decide as to which are the varieties which will be accepted one of the examples is that university of wisconsin this is i mean they produce about 31 different varieties and then they were clonally propagated also all the 31 varieties were clonally propagated in established clones and they were sent to peru but of these only three were accepted so these are the names which were accepted they were they have been given numbers so those were dto 2 28 and 33 which had been accepted some of them in between they might have omitted also or eliminated so this is of the number 31 comes though only 31 were submitted and these were released for cultivation with in the low land tropics so that way they would analyze it now the main thing which when we are producing potatoes or for that matter any plant by just increasing the yield that is just the quantity on the plant there is also another factor which decreases the yield and that is the disease and the pests so various so one wants to have a disease resistant varieties we will talk in our when we conclude about our fight of thora and how the irish famine had affected ireland to what a great extent extent normally people would do that in the introduction but i like to take talk about it at the end so that children remember it for a longer time of what humanity has gone through in fact when we read all these stories you will feel we have gone through much less in this pandemic so anyway so there have been various of these diseases which have been overcome through the use of unreduced gametes because we have been able to hybridize and bring about then introgression of these particular genes from the wild ones the wild ones of course are highly resistant to diseases and pests so the bacterial wilt of potato also we have been able to overcome that by the transfer from solanum fugera children sometimes at the spur of the moment in your exam you may not be able to recollect the name of the species from which it has been transferred but then also please mention and just write that from from the wild species and solanum fugera you are going to use the word very often so at least those examples please try to remember but if you are going to have objectives then of course you would have to remember all okay but unfortunately this resistance to bacterial wilt variety has not been suitable for the hotter climates so uh, that uh, anyway this particular gene or a part of the chromosome they have been able to transfer it into the forex clones similarly early blight and root not and we are having varieties resistant to that then considering the the pests you have resistance to potato tuber moth and cells to nematodes late blight of potato again is another notorious disease which i told you and how fight of thora and how it was uh, overcome in ireland in a similar manner through distant hybridization we will think about it at the end for the fun of it and then we have got and now it has been improved upon further and we have got resistant varieties in the tetraploid gene pool now let us think about the in a consequences of segregation and one of the things that actually happens is also a consequence and that is the setting in hostility in distant habitat we are not much bothered about sterility when it comes in a uh, clonally propagated plants like sugarcane and potato so there we know as it is we are relying on the tubers and we are using them also for propagation so it doesn't matter much but those crops in which we are going to utilize the fruits where the fruit is the crop which you are going to consume even if you do a clonal propagation you ultimately need the fruits if at all that fruit is going to be sterile it's okay i told you last time that many a times when you saw uh, the tomatoes which are bought from the market you saw seeds of that it produces a plant but unfortunately even if we even go up to the flowering stage but does not produce fruits and that is because there is a sterility which is set in in the f1 hybrid the wild variety of tomato that is lycopersicum pimpinellifolium easily crosses with lycopersicum esculentum and you get completely fertile hybrids but there are other varieties of uh, tomatoes also in which there will be sterility in the f1 some of them have some amount of fertility so there will be a variation in the percent of fertility which occurs then when sugarcane and maize across you have a complete sterility 
and these crops have been maintained through clonal propagation. Now, the sterility could be because of a cytogenetic factor, or it could also be because of a genetic factor, or it could be a cytoplasmic factor. When we think of the cytogenetic factor, it's obviously going to be what we have done earlier. That is, there would be a reduction in chromosome pairing. Children, one second. Oh, sorry. One second, children. Yes, children. Okay. So now it could be a, uh, there could be a reduction in chromosome pairing. As we had seen earlier also, we had seen that there may be a mismatch of the chromosomes and homologous pairing may not take place. So now, oh, sorry, it's one up. Okay. So now over here, yeah. Supposing if this is a chromosome and the chromosome of the other one, the other variety may be a larger one, or it may even be of the same size, but it may not pair because the homologous alleles are not available. And therefore, pairing will not take place. And then there would be an unequal distribution of the chromosomes to the two poles. And even if that does not happen, it could be that certain other factors are playing a role. Like you may get translocation taking place. There may be uh, deletions of certain chromosomes and it would result in the formation of bridges, lagards, various translocations and inversion loops at the time of meiosis. So obviously you will not be able to get a proper separation of the chromosomes, equal distribution of the chromosomes at the two poles. The remedy, of course, would be that you produce an amphidiploid or it is better that uh, you would be uh, wanting to have, though it is a tetraploid here itself, through sexual polyploidization, yet it may fail sometimes unless and until you go in for chromosome doubling. Now, according to Stevens, that there may be certain very small or cryptic structural changes which are taking place. And this would be what we call as the genetic basis of sterility. Now, when you think of the genetic basis, it obviously means that there are some variations in the gene or within the DNA strand, a deletion or an inversion or a substitution. In the nucleotide also is a kind of an aberration which is taking place at the molecular level or at a cryptic level, which you're not able to see under the microscope. So here you may see them pairing because there are small changes only in certain regions. And yet there would be a sterility and we would attribute that to the genes which is occurring. So Cetaria species are an example in which you have a normal pairing with nine bivalents formed, but yet there is a sterility. That is because though they've gone there, there may be some factor, like there could be a male sterility which has been induced, they've not been able to identify here, or there could be some other factor which is being involved. In the case of various rice varieties, there is a variation in the sterility and rice is another crop which has been exploited extensively for hybridization, for distant hybridization, considering species coming from various parts of the world, China, Japan, India, etc. So Oriza sativa, you have our variety Indica, Apna, Indian Wala, and it was crossed with Oriza sativa variety Japonica. And there was a variable sterility seen. Obviously, they took the fertile crop and then over generations, just as we obtained a triticale, here also we have been able to obtain a hybrid. Then, so these are actually cryptic changes which we have not seen and that was proposed by Oka, which I just told you earlier. And at times, the reciprocal cross may produce a fertile progeny. For example, when you're taking, it could be that you're having two species, species A and species B. And when A is female and B is male, it produces a fertile hybrid. When A is male but B is female, a sterile hybrid is produced. This could be because of some factor 
inhibiting or preventing this hybridization. Maybe the germination of the pollen grain, the various factors we studied in the beginning, these could be playing a role. And therefore, one normally tries to change the sex of the parents. Okay. Or make the female parent act as a male parent and so on. Now, let us think about what would result or the consequences that would happen of segregation in the distant hybrid. Now, initially, when you produce a hybrid, naturally, there is going to be maximum heterozygosity for most of the genes, unless and until both the parents had some genes which were completely, or both the parents were homozygous recessive for a particular gene or homozygous dominant for a particular gene. But that normally doesn't happen and you get a huge variation and there is a lot of heterozygosity. But then variation in several characters and one is to go to the field and literally hunt for the character you are seeing. So you can't start a program blindly. Ki chalo, hybridize karenge and dekhte kya hai. And that would be still more tiresome. You have to have a focus in your mind that this is what I want to get and then only search for that. Accidentally, you may discover something better and then that or something which you have not thought of and that, of course, you can incorporate. It can happen that some of the segregants may be weaker and some of them may be stronger. Obviously, you would be taking the stronger ones. Some might be better adapted to this new environment or there may be others or since one of the species is one which is not native to the region and it could happen that the hybrid also is not able to get adapted to the region. So it is a less adaptive one, and accordingly, one has to do the selection. Then uh, there may be the zygote might have eliminated during its division. It might have eliminated certain chromosomes. And also over a period of time, when division is taking place in the apical meristems of the shoot, over a period of time during mitosis itself, some chromosomes may get lost. Though we expect that at mitosis, such a loss should not occur because here there is absolutely no pairing of chromosomes, but it may happen. And then at the time of reproduction, again, there may be a loss of several chromosomes. You may get polyads formed instead of tetrads in the pollen grains, and you may have very small pollen grains also produced. And these may contain the, some uh, chromosomes which have failed to reach the poles, and then they have just formed a separate nucleus. This gamete, obviously, or this pollen grain, obviously, is going to be sterile. And the gametes that the produce, pollen grain produces, obviously, also would be sterile. So th these are the points which we said when distance of chromosomes are unequal again at NR phase two, you would get unbalanced gamete. Some of them may be N plus one or N plus minus one. And other, you may get a case where it is N plus four, N plus three, etc. Various variations will occur. And accordingly, of course, one side of number of chromosomes is added. The other side actually equal number of chromosomes would be decreased. Or you may not have an equal number of chromosomes added, though many have decreased because they have been, they would be later destroyed either by extra exonuclease activity, whence they fail to reach the poles, or they may go and form another small micro uh, pollen grain. And that obviously would be sterile. And even if the chromosomes pair, the crossing over is much less. So therefore, the segregation is not going to affect the typical Mendelian ratio. Whether it be monohybrid, dihybrid, trihybrid, whatever you're looking for. And that is not going to fit into the Mendelian ratio because of these problems that we will be facing. Even if the F1 is fertile, we have seen earlier that the F2 may be uh, sterile. And then F2 may look actually like a back cross rather than like, though you have inbred the F1, F2 may appear to be like a back cross rather than a hybrid itself. Now, male gametes are more sensitive to all these variations. Uh, and maybe that is the reason why nature also, and they're also exposed to the harsh environment. So this is also another reason, besides they being exposed to the environment, that nature produces a larger number of male gametes. Male gametes show more abnormalities when we study their meiosis as compared to the female gametes. So the high amount of male sterility also sets in. 
then you would also want to back cross them when you do a repeated back cross it's quite often that we use them as the male parent and not as the female parent okay one of the examples are crosses of which we have okay now we will go on to part 3 i'll stop sharing and go to the next slide kidhar gaya mera children one minute uh, my battery is only at 14% uh, ek minute ruko bhai children have you followed everything so far bachcha log i'm asking are you all there it look khana khane ko gaye kya yes ma'am ha yes okay so now we will think of the applications and the achievements mm -hmm. now if you have followed this so far if, and i think you have so then this part is just applications is just general talk and then it will go very smooth with all of you now many of our important crop species they are amphidiploids some of them have have been produced as amphidiploids by nature itself while others man has done it through successive plant breeding and achieved success so all our wheat sugarcane cotton so many varieties have been produced and all of them are allopolyploids or we can say that they are active they be they've started even behaving like diploids and they are the amphidiploids especially in wheat cotton and various brassica species but they do sugarcane they are propagated vegetatively but we know that a lot of distant hybridization has been achieved succeeded it has also happened in nature on its own and they are amphidiploids which are propagated vegetatively mm -hmm. and a lot of evolution has also gone in in the production of distant hybrids then in nature there has been a spontaneous chromosome doubling which has occurred and then some of them might have undergone the several meiotic irregularities and over a period of time got established then one of the mitotic irregularity which is actually an irregularity which the plant learned to have and devised a system is having unreduced gametes and cochicine has proved to be an excellent source for doubling the chromosome number though children every time we don't get success i'm saying every time we don't get success it doesn't mean that it doesn't work on the plant it works but at a time all the cells in the meristem are not going to divide So only the number of dividing cells. Remember, we calculate mitotic index. So 33 percent of the cells may be dividing at a time. So 33 percent cells have become tetraploid, but the remaining are diploid. And then maybe the progeny. I mean, the flowers which it produces over a period of time may be diploid. So many times we even repeat this colchicine treatment. When you do this, I'm just telling you, out of interest, that when you're putting colchicine on the shoot tip. there are different ways that one has to try out you have to try out four hours every day for consecutive three to four days or then you try a continuous period of 24 hours and then we analyze and standardize the procedure for a particular species with which we are working but overall of course we have to give a lot of credit to cochicine for the induction of auto and also for the induction of amphidiploids if at all you have merely undergone a hybridization and then you have doubled the chromosome number now an ideal dream of any plant breeder is to have a new crop species 
that is what a plant breeder always has a cherished dream that you want to have a normal species maybe having both the characters of the two parents a blend of the two characters or something different is what you are looking for so this creation of a new crop species is a great desire but many a times we end up using it as a new variety if at all it is intra varietal hybridization or you can even use it as a bridge species we will study about bridge species alien addition and alien substitution line and then true integration how we achieve the transfer of small chromosomes and at times you lose the genome completely of one of one of the parents and you have only the transfer of the cytoplasm you will wonder why should we have transfer of the cytoplasm well children we want the mitochondria and the plastids from the female parent maybe there is a male sterility gene which you want to be incorporated so that you don't need to undergo i mean subjected to emasculation and therefore you want the cytoplasm to come up from that species we will see it as we are studying now in crop in development of the new crop species as we have done when you are writing the applications of course you only have to insert the name and you are writing what you already know so it will be an inter specific hybridization program start with the diploid you get a f1 which is a, which we call it as a diploid maybe because we have started with both of parents having the same number of chromosomes and the number is a diploid number but then you need that it should undergo a chromosome doubling and you get the formation of an amphi diploid or an endo tetraploid now you mr or alternatively you have both the parents which are diploids no which are tetraploids sorry no need to uh, i mean wait for an unreduced gamete but then you produce an amphi diploid which will be a new species it is specific hybridization of diploids can also be produced through unreduced gametes so you will have three methods that is by crossing the diploids or by crossing two and then doubling the chromosome number or by crossing two auto tetraploids or by using the i mean hybrid diploids but having an unreduced gamete so this way we can produce a novel plant a completely different variety or a species altogether so success we got in the case of triticale there were a lot of mistakes also starting with 60% fertility and therefore over a period of time it's been overcome and we have learned many lessons of how to go about so the phanobrasic though we say was of academic importance only but yet it has been used and i mean now once again people are trying again with refona brassica based on the mistake that they have overcome with triticum then you have triticum and agelops grass then you have this fistula and lolium polymet and nepia grass has turned out to be a better fodder grass for the cattle and these grasses have been named they have been produced by iar right so they have been named as jaivant and yashwant and these are high fodder yielding quality a fodder crop is also very very important in our country and of course in all the agricultural units wherein you need to feed the cattle then new species have been have been developed by crossing are cultivated lycopersicum esculentum with lycopersicum pimpinelli folium and this has been selected now it must have been i mean it takes place in various research institutes throughout the country which are again units of iari and icar and then our indian council of agriculture research analyzes these before they are given to the market even uh, several farmers are given these to so you will learn in the practicals about randomized block latin square and i guess you did that in part 1 i'm not sure so under the new syllabus so anyway these are the uh, these are the bio these are the statistical analysis one needs to do in the field before these varieties are released analyze it see if it meets the standards and only then it will be released then various species of saccharum the most common being cross between saccharum officinal and s continentum then you have various cotton species innumerable varalakshmi cotton we have been hearing about it from childhood so varalakshmi savitri and these various ones which have been named i mean just given letters of the alphabet and these have also been produced these are actually in the specific hybrids but then they have been called as varieties of cotton because 
uh, for a common man, the different species of cotton themselves are varieties. So in many plants, even when it is a new species which has been produced, for a farmer who's not bothered about the specific and the generic name, he cotton G variety hai. That is the way he would be told and it happens. So Varalakshmi was produced at Bangor University by crossing his system gossip and Barbadens, and it had a higher yield, a higher spinning count, a longer staple, ideal for cotton, for weaving cloth, and these were the advantages. In Solanum, the Jolio officinarum and Spontanum, this is just mere reading, so I will go a little fast in this, if you don't mind. Again, lemongrass also. Lemongrass is important. Remember, for what is the economic importance of the plant? Lemongrass, obviously, we want lemongrass oil. And we will add it to the chai patti also for the same oil. The chai patti is added also to chai for the same thing. So, variety CKP, um, 25 gives 40% more oil. And of which there is more citral oil also present. And other species also have been produced. You have a variety, jam rosa, which is which is producing three times more oil. So one would definitely want to go in for these. Similarly, in rice also, we have obtained several such varieties. Okay. Then another thing that bothers us is, of course, our uh, disease resistance. So Bindi often, do you see when you're coming, I mean, when you're traveling by Central Railway or Western Railway, wherever there is Bindi growing on the railway line, many a time you will see that the Bindi leaves are having yellow colored veins and you feel it is so attractive you feel it is an ornamented plant but then it is actually the yellow vein mosaic virus which is causing the discoloration of the chlorophyll along the veins and giving you that mosaic pattern and that actually is decreasing the productivity by decreasing the amount of chlorophyll so then the plant itself now should be resistant to the virus so therefore it is the wild bindi which is resistant to the virus and that has been crossed and they've got a resistant variety for yellow vein mosaic virus then about uh, this uh, this is the way it has been produced so Prab prabhani kanti also was one of the high yielding and it has got very very dark green fruits and extremely tender the smaller ones the smaller fruits of uh, bindi when we go to select and it is also less fibrous it is a separate variety by itself. At a particular time in the market, you will get the smaller bindi, and then at a particular time, you will get the larger one. The larger ones, of course, are more fibrous. It is not that the smaller ones have been allowed to grow large. The smaller one also is a separate variety altogether, and it is an interspecific hybrid in the case of bindi. Then you have this. When you produce these hybrids, we also call them as a synthetic plant, something made by man. So in maize, sorghum, bajra, these are the numbers. And believe me, children, even in objective, nobody will ask you that C A S T one, two, three, four, five is of what? No one is going to ask you such a question. But try to remember as much as you can. Naturally, we would ask you questions which would involve a little bit of thinking and some amount of memory. But it will not be a cramming type of a question. But you need to try and remember as much as you can. You may get confused with these numbers also. Don't have to worry much about it. But don't bluff. Be honest in your paper. An examiner can make out your mistakes. It's not that your papers are not read. Then you have synthetic allopolyploids again produced by using bridge species. You want to cross species A and B. A and B may not be compatible. The cross itself, any one of them is the male and the female parent. That is, even a reciprocal cross may not be compatible. And when that happens, obviously, what you do is you use a species which is capable of getting hybridized with both, with A as well as B. So you start with, let's say, species A, and sorry, you start with species A, and you want to cross it with B, but both of them are not compatible. So I will cross A with C and produce AC. And now this AC, I will hybridize. Species B. I don't know why it's not coming. Okay, let's slow down. So now I'll cross it with B and I will get a condition as ACB. I can double the chromosome number here also. 
if I want only a few genes of B, then here I will not bother to double the chromosome number. But if I want at all this to work as a novel species again, I might need to double the chromosome number. So this would be a use. Okay. Now you have alien addition and alien substitution lines. Have I drawn it here? No. Okay. Now I'll just one second. One second. Okay. Now let's just see what can happen. You are having species A. I'm having species A, which I have crossed with B. And I have got the hybrid, which is A, B. Now, supposing if at all, this is A and it's B. Now, this I want to have only a few chromosomes of species B to be incorporated. So let's imagine that this is the donor species and this is the recipient species. So species A, I want the entire genome of A to be present, but I want only some characters of B to be incorporated. Okay. So what do I do? I will A as the recurrent parent. Now, some people, what they do is that when you're writing an AA, by AA, we are meaning the set of chromosome A. Uh, all species A and the set. So this is a diploid. Similarly, here also BB is the donor and it is a diploid. This particular plant is just an F1 hybrid, okay, which is AB. And this is the set of chromosomes. Now, I will be crossing AB again with AA. Right? This will give me one set of chromosomes as A. Now, this will give me, again, a few chromosomes of A and few of B. Do you agree? Okay. Now, as a plant breeder, I would not write a few chromosomes, few chromosomes. Instead, I will write A and B. And I will write over here in brackets or somewhere at the top where small letters denote the presence of only a few chromosomes. Capital letter denotes an entire genome. So I'm going to get a plant which is going to be Capital A, all the chromosomes, a few chromosomes, and small b. This, when it produces dummy again, growing from from this, and some of them will pair, may not pair. So I may even just write capital A, and I will write small b. I'm crossing it again with a. A recurrent parent. This will give me a. This has given me a b. I will get a a b. B are again as few chromosomes. I'm looking out for a single character. So what will I do? I will go to the field and only select those plants. Supposing I'm looking out for insect resistance, easier work. I allow the field, the experimental field, mind you, to get infested with the insect. I will introduce the insect at the field. And those in which this donor one, BB, has denoted the gene for insect resistance. Some of the plants may be having that particular chromosome in which this gene is present. Other plants, again with AAB, small b, may not be having that chromosome. Those plants actually will infestate it. So I will select the plants from those, the seeds of those plants, which are such that they have not got infestated. Again, it has been hybridized with AA, which is insect sensitive. So its gene may also get incorporated. So over a period of time with several, I mean, after several generations, I may reach a condition in which it is AA with one chromosome from B. 
So this becomes an alien addition line. You may have an addition line, alien addition line for each and every chromosome of B, but you are not looking for that. You're only looking for an alien addition line with the chromosome from B for your insect resistance. So this is the one which you have got. And this is the one which you will then send it. Now, what will happen? This may again not come in the next generation. So you will allow it to self or cross it with a similar one. It may not be compatible for self-fertilization. I will get some plants which are just AA. Some may be AA with 1A from here, 1A from here. Then maybe it will have one this B and it may not have this one B. In some gametes, B will go to one pole and not to the other. So let's presume that I have taken, I mean, by chance, some of the gametes are such that it's capital A and 1B, capital A and 1B from both the parents. And I've got AA with 2 of B. So AA to B. So therefore now this becomes a proper diploid. Maybe here it was 2N equal to 16. This is going to be 2N equal to 18. And this chromosome has been incorporated. So this becomes my alien addition line. Got it, children? Do I, do you need, do I need to repeat alien addition line? Batao, bacha log. Have you followed? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Now, children, instead of this, another thing that can happen when you're doing these crosses is that by chance, this chromosome B may pair with one of the chromosomes, may have a homologous region. By a homologous region, we mean not homologous. Homologous means the entire chromosome is pairing. Homeologous means a part is pairing or bhakti ka bichara akela. Idari pairing hua, idha kuch crossing hua. So one of the chromosomes may get incorporated and maybe you may lose a chromosome of A and you may retain a chromosome of B or by some other method, by some abnormality taking place in meiosis, it may happen that one chromosome of A is completely lost. So it would be AA minus two chromosomes of A plus two B. So this becomes an alien, so, I'm sorry, the entire one. This becomes an alien substitution line. While here we have an alien addition line. In an alien substitution line, you are going to have a substitution of the chromosome and therefore total number of chromosomes will be same as A. And here in addition line, there will be an increase in a homologous chromosome. Now, the nomenclature. Many a times, people, when we are writing AA, and when we are writing, uh, we can raise it to R as a recurrent parent, while BB becomes my donor parent. So I will write raised to D. So that becomes an exponent. But some of the authors, they prefer to say that it could be, a, they would like to go according to the character. So they will say AA, that is disease susceptible, and BB is disease resistant. So here it can, I mean, result in a confusion whether this is resistant or this is recurrent. So instead of that, you can follow this nomenclature. And if you want, you can even add, so R and susceptible to the disease. And this is D, resistant to the disease. So donor is resistant. You write R as a smaller letter. And here we have this, which is R. But the recipient species is the susceptible one. And whatever you write, please, in the beginning of your answer, please mention what is the nomenclature being followed. These are the examples. In the case of Nicotiana, they have a tobacco mosaic resistant gene, which is present on chromosome H. Now, the karyotype of Nicotiana was there much earlier, and chromosomes were named in alphabetical order, A, B, C, D, and so on. So chromosome H carries that particular gene. Like in humans, how we had an international conference and 
then it has been decided certain crops like maize and other they have got a norm international nomenclature to be followed maybe in tobacco it is not taken place as yet or it must be very recent and we have not seen that literature but anyway it is on chromosome number h and still accepted as chromosome number h so when that gets incorporated into nicotiana tobacco you will have 48 chromosomes of nicotiana tobacco along with two chromosomes h so 2h all right and there we are writing the number i mean the name of the chromosome that it has got 2h chromosome and the number has become 15 so this has become an alien addition line now unfortunately chromosome h has also got the gene for reduced growth and short broad leaves so it is not an ideal alien addition line tobacco it is the leaf which needs the leaf area also matters you know they make those big cigars the quantity of the tobacco that leaf dry leaf powder which has to go into it all that is very important so we do not want reduced growth we want plain luxuriant vegetative growth and you also want large leaves so therefore this incorporates even the undesired character so here they are working upon or just the transfer of a small chromosome fragment meantime maybe they will be able to transfer the gene it's that now one pair of chromosomes so now you have a substitution line definition of that wherein we said that we are done a a minus 2 small a and then we had plus 2 b so it's 2 and minus 2 plus 2 got it no alien substitution line they will show certain undesired characters also uh, and they are more than the alien addition line because certain characters of the female of the main of the receive i'm sorry of the recurrent parent have also got lost then you have both alien and alien substitution lines which are very commonly done and anyway they have been viable and produced well in uh, in polyploid species so let us see how they have done in the case of polyploid species and how they have induced polyploidy and attained some success so you have this recipient species r and the donor species b which is disease resistant and r is disease susceptible i could have written r raised to s so susceptible and d being resistant so dr or r raised to ds and d raised to uh, disease resistant so dr that way also i could have done produce a triploid that is a b c and colchi seed was used you got an amphidiploid a a b b c c now i will use this a a b b c c the recurrent parent as the female parent and i will cross sorry i will i'm very sorry i will use the recurrent parent as the male parent donating its apna uh, yet donating its pollen now here why am i why am i using it on the left side because here i have got this recurrent parent now has become a a b I have made a mistake. Huh? One second, children. One minute. Let me just check recipient species. Yeah. Sorry. Huh. So now this recipient one will become the. Sorry. This is going to be the recipient species which is going to receive it. And why have I done it here? Children, I have made a mistake in writing in this table. I will modify this table and send it to you. Don't take a screenshot of this table. Anyway, I've got A A B B C C, which I'm going to use as a female parent. and it will keep donating yeah correct this is the recurrent parents of yes yeah yeah sorry barabar hai barabar hai you know hurry abhi wo time bhi dekh rahi hu na only one minute is left okay so here this becomes my recurrent parent i'm repeating it every year year after year and this obviously yeah yeah there is no mistake you can take the green shot sorry for that dekho tum log time pe aao baad mein mujhe tension aata hai end mein to complete ha huh? yeah what i want to complete no i come with that focus and when it doesn't get i become tense okay so here i've got um, obviously half the number of chromosomes therefore i will get a pentaploid then only a few chromosomes and i will get small c so of course this will be the recipient i mean this will be the parent which is going to receive and the recurrent parent after birth right i will be using it to give me the pollen grains generation after generation now i will give i mean next time we will draw these also ourselves so that you will understand it better i will just complete this alien substitution line 
and then we will stop here. A, A, B, B, and here I got the C. This is start one. Huh. So here now I have got this. Now I want it to be substituted. So I will be taking a few chromosomes from C and it will get incorporated. Ultimately, I will reach a stage where it should be one C, which becomes my alien addition line. This becomes my alien substitution line from AABB, one of the chromosome is eliminated. So now, selfing will result in the CC, and that is an alien addition line, complete chromosome C, or you can write even 2C. And here I will write minus 2 and CC. Okay. Then transfer a small chromosome fragment, I think we will do that from next time, okay? So next time, again, I will do alien addition and alien substitution line, and then go ahead the earlier part was simple enough. I need not repeat that. Okay, children, shall we stop here? And children, next time, please come on time. You can come with your food. I really don't mind it. Okay, come with your table. I mean, khana pina lekar ao idhar baithkar khate jao aur sunte jao. I will not find. I mean, mind it. It doesn't look good because then you will go late for the next lecture also. Hmm? So it's not correct. So please, next time onwards, please remember. See, all of you are there. All of you are such good children, and you are at home only. No, how much is the traveling distance? Maximum ten feet, na, from one room to the other. Usse jada to nahi na. Okay, chalo. It's on. Look, one room is very far. So, kitna hoga? Twenty feet. Usse jada to nahi chalna padega na. So that is not a long distance compared to going to Junjunwala, huh? So please, please come on time next time. Okay, children. So maybe end today. Yeah. So I'll stop yeah. the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You. We meet next week. No exam next week, no. Hello, everyone. Uh, very good. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, ma'am. Good afternoon. So we wait for five minutes as usual and let people join. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Great.
हेलो यस मैम या शुड वी स्टार्ट यस मैम प्लीज यस मैम प्लीज Uh, let me share my screen with you all. Um, I'm actually you are not the host. Yeah, so I don't know why this is happening. So, oh. so Mr. Devi Prashad Shetty need to make you the host for that. Okay. So I need to call him first, right, and let him know he won't be. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. 